Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here going over a quick property of Laplace transforms, linearity. If we have the Laplace transform of some constant multiple of f of t plus some other constant multiple of a function g of t, we just want to be able to think of these simply and linearly. We'll show you very briefly why you can do that looking at the integral definition of the Laplace transform. So if we have some constant multiple of f of t plus some constant multiple of g of t, the Laplace transform will be the definite integral from zero to infinity of those things times e to the negative st dt. Now remember this is an integral, so a couple of things we know about integrals. We can certainly evaluate an integral one term at a time, so we can think of this as the integral of some multiple of f of t times our exponential, plus our definite integral of some multiple of g of t times our exponential. And because we know we can bump out constant multiples with definite integrals, we can go ahead and move our constant multiples alpha and beta out front of the integrals here. And you'll notice here now our integral is actually the Laplace transform of f of t, and this integral here is the Laplace transform of g of t. So we really just end up with those constant multiples out front times the Laplace transforms of those functions evaluated as separate terms. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of examples here. I've got a sample Laplace transform chart. We're trying to take the Laplace transform of 3 minus 5t plus 2t squared. So we can certainly think of this as the Laplace transform of 3 minus the Laplace transform of 5t plus the Laplace transform of 2t squared. And we can also bump these constant multiples out. So we can really think of this as 3 times the Laplace transform of 1 minus 5 times the Laplace transform of t plus 2 times the transform of t squared. And now we just use our chart to evaluate. So the Laplace transform of one will be using this definition here. So this will equal three times one over s minus five. The Laplace transform of t, that would be like t to the one. We would get one factorial, which is one, and we'd have one more power, so it'd be s squared. So we would actually get times one over s squared using this definition, and using this definition again, but with a power of two, so we'll say plus two times t squared would give us two factorial, which is two, over s to the two plus one, which would be s cubed, and so we end up with an answer of three over s minus five over s squared plus four over s cubed for this one. Looking at one more Laplace transform of 4e to the 5t plus 3 sine 5t minus 2 cosine 5t. Let's go ahead and change this all at once. I'll go ahead and split it up and bump my constants out. So this will be the same as 4 times the Laplace transform of e to the 5t plus 3 times the transform of sine 5t minus 2 times the transform of cosine of 5t. e to the 5t here, we'll be using this one here with a equal to 5. So that will give us 4 times 1 over s minus 5 plus 3 times sine of 5t. We'll be using sine kt with k equal 5. So that will actually be k would be 5 over s squared plus k squared would be s squared plus 25 minus 2 times the transform of cosine 5t. We'll use our cosine kt here with k equals 5 again. Cosine will actually have s on the top over s squared plus k squared becomes s squared plus 25. And so here we get 4 over s minus 5 plus 15 over s squared plus 25 minus 2s over s squared plus 25, and of course if you'd like to combine these last two or make one big fraction in general, you can, but we'll go ahead and stop there. All right, so those are some examples of using linearity with Laplace transforms, bumping out constant multiples, and just evaluating one term at a time. Coming up in our next video in the series, we'll actually take expressions involving s, we'll compute the inverse transform, and find the original functions f of t for those. Thanks for watching everybody, we'll see you then.